What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over eight common SEO mistakes to avoid and this is really a beginner's video and some common SEO mistakes that I see from brand new websites and for people who don't have a lot of experience with search engine optimization. Throughout this video, I'm going to be using my brand new website, brickpop.com, as an example, and I'm going to be showing you some different ways to avoid these mistakes as you continue to try to grow your organic search traffic. This website is not getting a lot of traffic yet, but I feel like patience is also another mistake that a lot of people make. So anybody who's promising you really quick traffic from search engine optimization, years ago, you could do that much easier. It has become much more competitive. Google is not taking a brand new website who publishes 20 blog posts and putting them to the top of search results anymore. So generally, if anybody's promising you really quick results, they're generally trying to sell you something. So I'm not trying to sell you anything. I want you to just avoid these common SEO mistakes. And we're going to get started with number one, the number one SEO mistake. And I recently made a video about this is just not creating content. So if I come over to my website real quick and I just come to the back end of my website, I have 40 published blog posts. I would say starting about a month ago, so about July 15th, if we're looking at some of these published dates, Starting about July 15th, so you can see July 17th, I updated some of these blog posts. I started writing a lot more blog posts since then. So here at July 17th and coming up to the top, I started writing a lot more blog posts, updating old blog posts. So we're up to 40 total published, published blog posts right now. If I stop creating content altogether, I'm gonna take you to the back end of my Google Search Console here, we're looking at the last three months. So you'll see right here is right around July 15th, and you're seeing, we're seeing a little bit of growth since July 15th. Now not spending every last hour on this website, so I don't expect some massive spike here, but you will see spikes when you are creating consistent content. So SEO traffic will not grow without consistent content creation. If you aren't creating content, no matter what your SEO strategy is, it's going to fail. New content leads to more backlinks, new content helps amplify some of your other blog posts, and consistently creating new content will eventually help you build up authority in your niche, authority with your website in general. So. Publish new content frequently, and you should also update old content, which I'll mention again throughout this video. Now, coming back over to my website real quick, just some of the pieces of content I am creating. So if we come up to the top here, very first one, 14 best DIY STEM kits for 2023. Second one over here, nine best Montessori cheese wedge toys. So my website is all geared towards child development, Montessori toys, STEM toys. So I'm going to be putting together all sorts of guides like this one because there aren't a ton of really good articles about the different categories of toys. You can find a ton of articles about the best Montessori toys 2023, best Montessori toys for one-year-olds. But when it comes to specific toys, there's not as many articles like this one. Same with things like DIY STEM kits. So the two main topics I'm basically going to start covering Montessori toys and STEM toys, and I will eventually start to expand my content beyond that as well. So number one, not creating content. I'll go through my content a little bit more throughout this video, um, but let's get to number two, and number two is poor keyword research. So I truly believe just use the Google Keyword Planner. It's very easy to find great keywords. You could also incorporate paid tools like SEMrush, Ahrefs, SpyFu is another pretty good uh, paid tool. So incorporating some of those free and paid keyword research tools can help kind of take your website to the next level. If you're not focusing on the best keywords for your niche, you're going to struggle to grow your traffic. Also, understand search intent. So a couple of things first and foremost, let's start in the Google Keyword Planner. Okay, so when you sign into your Google Ads account, even if you don't have any campaigns running, so once you create your Google Ads account, go to Tools and Settings, and under Tools and Settings, you're going to see Planning, and you're going to find the Keyword Planner. So what we want to do is open the Keyword Planner. This is the best free keyword research tool. Now, one of the downsides with Keyword Planner is they may show you ranges of data instead of the act the actual data that you need as far as search volume. So if you are seeing ranges of data, I would not worry too much about that. In order to find keywords, now the keyword list that I recently created looks like this one here. So you can see at the very top, I start with a topic, then we have our main keyword here for that topic, basically same exact thing. So if we're looking at Montessori toys and STEM toys, just to keep this really simple, basically what I do is I use the Google Keyword Planner to find all sorts of long tail keyword variations based on Montessori toys couple different ways to do this, but one of the best ways to do it is in the keyword planner, just start with the main keyword that you want to create content about. So if we start with something like Montessori toys here, I click on get results. They're going to give me all sorts of different keywords related to Montessori toys. Now, what you can do is you can go through these toys and you're going to see all sorts of, so Montessori play gym, Montessori busy board. You can download all of these keywords and then go through them individually and just say, okay, Montessori puzzle. That's a good one. Montessori balls are a good one. If we're looking by average monthly searches, you can see what the most popular keywords are. The other thing to look at are bid ranges. If people are bidding very high for keywords, that represents value. That means advertisers are willing to pay a lot for that individual keyword. 
So I've basically taken a lot of these keywords here. And one thing you can do to make it a little bit easier is add a filter and then go to keyword and just say keyword text must contain and start with Montessori toys. So what that's going to help you do is as you create more and more content about different types of Montessori toys, it's going to help you rank for all of your main keywords. So the more thing that you have written, for example, I have a page on my website for Montessori bath toys. I still need to create one for outdoor toys. I need to create one for learning toys, one for two year olds, one for one year olds. So there's a lot of different pages that I still need to create on my website using keyword research strategies where you're actually finding the right keywords for your business and understanding search intent is vital if you want to be successful. So if I want to rank for Montessori wooden toys, the best thing to do is search this keyword directly in Google and actually analyzing that search en engine results page. So we have Montessori wooden toys here. So go beyond the advertisements, obviously. And then we're going to start right here. So the very first result here is just says Montessori toys. Then we get to target wooden Montessori toys, motherhood community, the 14 best Montessori wooden toys, 15 best Montessori wooden toys. So clearly I need to put together an article of the best Montessori wooden toys. These ones are pretty updated articles. So it's going to be up to me to put together a really good guide of different types of wooden Montessori toys. Now, as we get a little bit further down, you can see as far as keyword search intent, we start to find more and more pages that aren't necessarily geared specifically towards wooden toys. So you're seeing something like this Montessori toys for babies and toddlers. Ultimately, what I'd like to do is create a guide where I can outrank some of these pages and then slowly move my page up the list of search results as we continue to create content. So poor keyword research, not creating content. Those are the two most important things to me as far as search engine optimization. Now, obviously you need an optimized website. You need to be creating great content, but publish new content frequently, create an organized keyword list. You can easily export keywords directly from the Google keyword planner. So if we come back over here really quickly and we open up the Google keyword planner again here, what we can do is we can download these keywords and you can make a very organized list of keywords. Now, if you're, you are using filters like this, where keyword text contains Montessori toys, just keep in mind, there are going to be things here, and this will be the same for every single niche where there's going to be keywords that aren't, don't necessarily use Montessori toys. And this is where you may need to go through these and say, okay, let's manually take some of these keywords like busy board, wooden toys, plate, or I guess toys would work play gym, anything that doesn't include toys in there. So you can also add a filter and you could do keyword text and do does not contain toys, click on apply. And what that's gonna allow you to do is see some of those other keywords as well. And this, it makes it much easier to go through all these keywords and create an article about Montessori balance boards, which probably not overly competitive if I put together an article like the 20 best Montessori balance boards for kids. So two biggest SEO mistakes I really wanna focus on, not creating content, poor keyword research. Number three is no keyword map. So each keyword should be mapped to the page on your website that is targeting that keyword. So your fix is to match keywords to individual pages. Very easy to do this di directly with your keyword research list. Now you can create a beautiful keyword research list and make it look much prettier than mine does. But ultimately at the end of the day, you need a list of keywords. You need a list of URLs mapped to those individual keywords. The reason this is important is as I write an article like Montessori bath toys, I want to make sure I know, okay, I already have that page on my website. If you have 200, 300, 400 blog posts, you're going to forget whether or not you wrote about Montessori sensory toys. So come over to your keyword map. You can always do a quick search for all of your blog posts, obviously, but this becomes very helpful, especially as you start to rank for more and more keywords and you want to track how well that page is doing with that traffic. And you want to see any rank changes for specific pages. If I'm targeting Montessori music toys, I have this page Montessori music. If this page all of a sudden drops out of the rankings, then I need to understand maybe I need to update this page to be more geared towards toys, be more geared towards overall music development, whatever it may be. So number three, no keyword map. It just helps to understand, okay, we're already targeting that keyword on this individual, using this individual page, using this blog post. You may have some examples where if you're selling e-commerce products and you're also writing blog posts for example if i come over here and i have montessori wooden toys so i create a blog post of the 30 best montessori wooden toys for 2023 then i also have a page on my website which would be similar to targets here where it's wooden montessori toys where basically i just have a list of all of my montessori toys for sale that are made out of wood Ultimately, you it may seem like you're competing with yourself, but you can use canonical URLs and tell Google, I would rather you rank this page than that page. So when you're looking at search intent, that can be a little bit of a challenge, especially as you're saying, okay, 
I have covered this and I have a page on my website for the 14 best Montessori wooden toys and I have this page on my website as well. If you're creating really good product listing pages and really good blog posts, I really wouldn't worry about it because you may end up being able to rank for both. And also Google will look at the exact search term people are typing in. So if I have Montessori wooden toys and I do best Montessori wooden toys, it's probably going to come up with a list of the 14 best Montessori wooden toys, the best wooden Montessori toys for kids. So whatever it may be, Google is going to look at that search intent and I wouldn't worry too much about competing with yourself on the same page. So number three, no keyword map, match keywords to individual pages and make sure you understand what focus keywords you have for certain pages. Number four is keyword focus. So where that is, this is really more about on-page SEO. Um, so making sure that the keyword that you're focused on, it should be in your URL, it should be in your page title, it should be in your meta description, it should be in your image alt tags, should be in your first paragraph and your keywords and long tail variations sh should be used throughout your blog post. So coming back over to my page of content here, nine best Montessori cheese wedge toys. So if we look at the very top, well, you can't see this URL. My URL is brickpop.com slash Montessori cheese wedge toys. So the exact keyword that I'm trying to target here is right there. It's right here. If we keep scrolling down, you're going to see if you're looking for something fun for toddlers and kids, you will love Montessori cheese, cheese wedge toys. What are Montessori cheese wedge toys? So use these in your headers as well. Use these all throughout your blog post. Now I should put best Montessori cheese wedge toys, and I think I have nine listed here. So you ultimately wanna make sure that Google really understands what this page is about. The alt tag for this image is Montessori cheese wedge toys. So I know it kind of seems like overkill, but when Google is looking at a page and they're going to say, okay, what is the topic of this page? Make it as clear as possible to Google. It doesn't mean keyword stuffing, so I need to kind of update my headlines a little bit here, especially this one right here, but it doesn't necessarily mean keyword stuffing and trying to jam Montessori wooden cheese wedge toy everywhere throughout your blog post. You should understand keyword density where you're not just stuffing that keyword everywhere throughout your blog post, but optimize, optimize your on-page SEO, create helpful content, but also keep in mind you can still have a keyword focus with helpful content. Next is going to be no visual media. So blog post contains no original images or videos to enhance the written content. The fix is to add images and videos to your blogs. So the example I'm going to show you here is first off, you can always add videos. I don't I'm not creating videos for brickpop.com yet, but a video like this one that I'm creating with the eight SEO mistakes that you should avoid. I'm going to write a blog post on Surfside PPC. I'm going to embed this video on that blog post. So using visual media, I'll also have this image here as well. So basically I have an image, I have a video, I have written content, more visual media. It's another great way to also show that this is human written content. Your AI bot is not going to be able to create custom unique graphics and screenshots. They may be able to create images and you can use all sorts of different image prompts, but you're never going to be able to get something like this, for example, eight common SEO mistakes to avoid a really simple infographic. You're not going to be able to get something like this without putting in a little bit of effort yourself and you can't just completely rely on AI for everything. And that's why visual media can be a great way to say, you know, we have a blog post, we have images, we have videos, we are teaching people how to do this in different ways. So for different learners, we can make it very easy for them to understand exactly what this page is about and how they can learn this on their own with a bunch of different resources available. So the fix is really add images and videos to your blogs. You can add PDFs, you can add quizzes, checklists, um, you can add really anything to kind of enhance your written content. So it could be a graphic, it could be statistics, it could be really anything that you think will take the existing blog article. You could literally just create a graphic that is something along the lines of what is the number one SEO mistake and just create a graphic that just looks like this, not creating content, and then maybe put some type of statistic on there showing you know websites that create this many blog posts per month are more likely to rank higher and drive traffic, et cetera, et cetera obviously, whatever statistic you want to use there. So the example I'm going to use here for visual media is I recently updated this blog article, the complete guide to stages of early development. So we start with a featured image at the top. Um, but as we come down here, so this is a, a simple graphic I made using canva.com. Five stages of early child development, newborn stage, infant stage, toddler stage, preschool stage, early school stage. Go over each individual stage and then we have a graphic for each individual stage as well. 
So just some different ways to kind of show, okay, here are some of the different milestones people are going to go through. But I could literally say, okay, here are some language milestones and turn this right here into a graphic. So it's just important to enhance your content with some additional visual media because when you get long blocks of text like this, essentially what I need to do is make sure I'm adding a few more images here, maybe find another video on YouTube that could be helpful for this topic. So there's no downside to doing that as well. Even if you don't own the video, just embed it directly to your blog not monitoring your traffic. So you should be monitoring your search engine traffic with Google Analytics 4 and Google Search Console to see what's working. I am not really getting enough search engine traffic to see much through Google Analytics 4, but with Google Search Console, I can start to see some of the keywords I'm ranking for, some of the pages that are ranking. And the main thing that I like using it for is, so we look at pages here and we look at our top pages by impressions. I like to look at what pieces of content on my website so you can see here DIY STEM kits, the article I showed you earlier, circuit boards for kids. Now, this one right here was the original URL for circuit boards for kids. I changed it and I did a 301 redirect to a, a little cleaner URL. So you can see right here, another example of making sure you have the keyword you're targeting in your URL. But I like to see what is actually ranking high. And since these are starting to get more impressions, if we look at our average position in search, so these ones right here, not great yet, but as we start to grow and we increase our position for some of these different pages, it gives me a better understanding of, okay, these are the types of content that are ranking higher. Search queries. So seeing what your top search terms are by clicks, by impressions, you can come over here and look at dates and compare. So we don't have enough data to really compare data yet, but as we start to get more and more clicks and impressions, you can see some search terms where you've seen a lot of growth and search terms where you may have seen it dragging you down a little bit. If I continue to create high quality content related to Montessori toys and Montessori education and really any Montessori keyword that would be relevant for my blog, what it's going to do is it's going to help me rank for more search terms. Right now I'm ranking for 136 search terms, so that's not really that many. Help me rank for more search terms and it will help increase my rankings for these existing search terms. So making sure you're monitoring traffic to really understand what's working, analyze your search engine traffic to look at some of your top landing pages from your for your organic search traffic, and then seeing what types of blog posts are really resonating with people and really ranking high in search engines as well. So other thing is just make sure that you're not dropping off your traffic. If, if you have a page that's ranking high at one point and you all of a sudden see it drop, generally means you need to go back and update it, update the content, make sure it's completely relevant, and make sure you're looking at what's currently ranking above you to make sure you've created better content than that. Technical problems, so no HTTPS, you wanna make sure you're using um, a secure website. Any website crashes, page crashes, broken pages, 404 redirects, missing images, slow pages, all of them can provide a poor user experience. So you wanna avoid technical issues, and this is another area where using Google Search Console can help you, because if you come over to Experience, um, I think they're actually updating these. Yeah, the page experience will, report will be changing. So my website's not big enough to worry about this too much, but if you come in here to page experience, core web vitals, mobile usability, you'll be able to see, okay, so it's showing I have 18 usable pages on mobile. So you just wanna make sure that you're not having any issues as far as your website being too slow or um, the crawler not being able to access some of your pages. So by using Google Search Console, sometimes they will say, uh, our crawler wasn't able to access a page due to a block by your robots.txt. So what that means basically is just make sure your website's easy to access, make sure it's completely secure. So we have our SSL certificate on our page. Um, it's pretty, pretty user friendly overall. So you want every aspect of your website to be easy to use so people can easily navigate your website and they're not waiting too long for pages to load. All of these different things can have an impact on your search engine traffic and ultimately if you are having technical problems on your website, it's really just gonna show that it's not a high quality user experience for your guests. So number eight, last but not least, and coming back really to not monitoring our traffic, but old content, poor content. So high quality content is gonna to lead to higher rankings and more backlinks. People are more likely to link to a page that is high quality, more likely to link to a website that is constantly producing new content. All of those things help increase your rankings. Your content should always be user focused and helpful. And it should always be relevant. If I have a page on my website and I do have pages on Surfside PPC that are outdated and some of the content on them, for example, my Google Ads conversion tracking tutorial is using the old version of Google Analytics on that page. So that's a blog post that I need to update. It is on my list of things to do. So understanding that if your content is old or poor or not relevant or not updated, 
then it's never really going to rank. And it, if it was ranking at one point, it's eventually going to lose rankings. The concept of evergreen content, there's very few niches that can put out a piece of content once and never touch it again. So there's very few examples of how you can do that. But ultimately, what you want to do is always go back and make sure you have updated content. You could even go in and add 50 words to it, remove 50 words from it, add a new image, add some type of some other type of helpful thing within your content. I know people go back to their pages and they start adding an FAQ section, especially with ChatGPT and all these other tools that can easily create FAQs for your website. So making sure that you're not using old content or poor content. So to finish off this video, let's go through our eight common SEO mistakes one more time. Now, there's plenty of other mistakes people make. So, you know, using just strictly AI content, not using any editors as far as your content. So there's a million SEO mistakes, but these are eight that I see common and things that you should avoid. Not creating content, number one mistake to avoid, publish new content frequently. Poor keyword research or really just not understanding search intent in general. Um, so make sure you're creating an organized keyword list. Focus on the main topics that you cover and find long tail keywords to cover those topics. No keyword map. So each keyword should be mapped to a page on your website. Really, this is all about organization from your keyword research to your keyword map, making sure you stay organized. No keyword focus for your individual blog posts or product pages or product category pages. Really any category or blog posts or any page on your website. Keyword should be in the URL, page title, meta description, image alt tags. This can all be done if you're using WordPress with the Yoast SEO or the Rank Math plugins. They make it very easy to set meta descriptions, to set target keywords, making sure that you are using really clean URLs and everything about your website should be SEO friendly and your pages should be optimized for on-page SEO. No visual media, so make sure you enhance your written content with videos and images, not monitoring your search engine traffic. So Google Analytics 4, Google Search Console will allow you to see what's working and what's not working and what's growing and what's dropping. Fixing all technical problems on your website, and then last but not least, just making sure you don't have really poor content or really old content that's not updated. So if you have any questions about any of these SEO mistakes, I'm going to be trying to avoid them as well as I continue to try to grow my traffic. As you can see, this brand new website, if we come over here to performance, really what, we're, what you're going for is create new content and just look for that growth. Don't get discouraged if you're not seeing huge growth right away. I've spent a lot of hours on content on this site already, and I'm not seeing huge growth yet. So, But that's something I kind of expect. The other thing is coming here to indexing and pages. This is one of the reports I like to look at. So you could see for a long time, 17, or 14 index pages, 17 not index pages. So this is starting, and I said around July 15th, so we're at 38 index, 35, and today we're at 39 index pages. So not quite exactly where I wanna be, or I guess down here, July 15th, we're at 23 index pages, now we're at 39 index pages. So we're seeing some growth there. We almost have double the amount in about a month. We wanna keep growing the amount of pages that are indexed and making sure they're really high quality pages that are targeting relevant keywords. Ultimately, I want this number to get over a thousand over time, but that's gonna take some time, just like growing our traffic is gonna take some time. If you're interested in watching me build this website, you can join my membership program at surfsideppc.com slash membership. I will be growing this website and sharing all my results along the way. So. Thank you for watching my video and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.